Hey and welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to take a look at how we can use the new button styles available to us in iOS 15. Just in case you missed it, I actually did a video called Buttons in SwiftUI that covers button, style, button styles in iOS 14 and below as well as different ways to configure a button so definitely check that out. Starting with iOS 15, we now have a ways to style our buttons and make them look more uniform with Apple Styles guidelines. These options come in place of new modifiers available to us, so let's check them out. So the first one we're going to do is actually add in a scroll view and a V-stack so we can see all the variations. <coughs> so let's just add a button onto the screen to see the difference. So I'm going to type this out and then we'll break it down as usual. So now we have our button on the screen, but how can we easily recreate this using the new button styles API in iOS 15? So let's actually type this out and then break it down. So looking at our button, we've got a button here and it's got a back, red background and a clip shape on it. So let's actually just type out button. So we're just going to copy this here. Now, the first thing we want to do is we actually want to copy the red background for this button. So I'm just going to zoom in a bit more so you can see it. So let's actually give <clears throat> so let's actually give our button a tint of red first. Cool. So the next thing we want to do is actually set our button to be bordered prominent for its button style. So we can get this effect where we get this red background and white text. So now you can see by us setting it to border prominent, we actually already get this rounded rectangle effect and the background, so it's looking similar. And now what we want to do is actually control the control size for us. So let's actually do this now. So it's not the exact same, but what we actually do get here is we actually get the systems version of a large button for us, so we don't need to define the padding. So you can see here, just by looking and comparing the two, we've already used less modifiers and achieved a similar effect. Now you may be wondering that actually, you know what, yeah, the corner radius is not the exact same. Well, if we wanted to, we could actually control the corner radius as well. So we can do this by actually setting a button border shape. So let's actually go below our button style and we'll set a butter border shape. And then this time in the shape, this time in the shape, we'll specify a rounded rectangle with a corner radius of eight. And now you can see that we have the same corner radius that we do here. But this time the system kind of handles all the styling and you know sizing for us so what i actually want to do now is actually go through all the possible variants available to us for each property so let's actually do this now and then we'll break it down so we'll start off with the button style modifier so we'll create another v stack and we'll create a set of buttons and then we'll break it down what we're doing on this example here is we're going to talk about all the different button styles that you can use within iOS. Now it's worth noting that these button styles are specific to iPhone devices and there are button styles that may be available for macOS and watchOS, but we're just working with an iPhone app here, so we're not going to look into those. So the first style we have here is border prominent, which is what we looked at before. And as you can see with border prominent, you get this effect where you get the tint of the button. So in this case, mint and it automatically applies a white style onto the foreground for the text as well. So we don't actually need to handle any kind of text styles. It kind of just does it all for us. And this matches the system's border prominent style. So if you want to have a button that looks like this in iOS, then you could simply do that by setting the button style to border prominent. After that, we actually have a style here called bordered, which is very similar to the border prominent, except this time you'll notice that the tint of the button is actually almost like washed out a bit and the tint is applied this time to only the text. So you can see here that it's almost like a, not a disabled, but almost like a secondary version of this button. And then if we just move down, you'll see that we have another option called borderless, which is the similar to our bordered, except this time we don't actually have the background border on the bottom, we just have the text being in the tint color. And then we actually have here plain, which is just a plain text. So you can see here that the tint here we use as mint, but it's not being applied. We just have a button with some black text on it. And then finally, we have automatic. So automatic means that the system will actually choose what it thinks is appropriate. And in this case, it's chosen that it should actually use the mint tint on the text for our button. Cool. So we saw all those options. 
Now the next set of options that I want to go over is actually the button border shapes. And if you actually want to learn more about shapes, I actually have a video called Shapes in Swift UI. So again, what we're going to do is just create another V stack with a set of options and then break down each configuration. So now we're looking at our border shape examples and these are the possible configurations for the shapes that you can add on. Now it's also worth noting as well that if you want to create your own custom border shape, you could do this, but we're not actually going to look into it. Pause, delete that bit. Cool. So now let's look at all the possible border shapes that you can use. So the first one we have is rounded rectangle and this allows to specify a corner radius. So you can see here, we specify the corner radius of 12 and it's drawn out for us. The next shape we have here is rounded rectangle, but this time we don't actually set our own custom corner radius. We just literally just let the system decide what it thinks is appropriate and it applies that for us. The next shape we have here is capsule. So we get this capsule effect here. So we don't need to clip a capsule shape on it. And then finally, the next style that we have here is automatic. So this will use the system again, will decide what is appropriate for the context that you're using your app in. So if it's a watchOS app, a Mac app or an iPhone, it will decide what shape is appropriate. So the final option that I want to break down is the new control size. So we'll do the same again, where we list out all the options and then just see what happens. So let's do that now. So now we're actually looking at our button control size examples. And you can see here that this time, we're just changing the size of the button. So they're all used to the same shape and button style. But you can see here the lowest control size that we have here is mini. And that goes here, as you can see. And we also have small. Now, when you actually compare mini and small, I don't think there's actually that much of a difference between the two visually. I can't see it anyway. So they're actually quite same, quite the same. And then the next style up from small that we have is regular, which you can see here. And then finally, we have large. So this again is really good because if you just want to use the system sizing and you don't want to have to specify padding or guess what the size of a button is for most iOS apps, you can just decide and see the control size that you want. So we've looked at all the options needed in the new modifiers, but we've not actually discussed what this looks like when working with different button roles. So different buttons can have different roles. So you can have a button with a descriptive role or a cancel role or a role of none. So let's actually add in a collection of delete and cancel buttons and see what they look like when we actually use the new iOS 15 styles on them. So again, I'm just going to copy these style calls. Again, I'm just going to type these styles in and then we're going to break them down. So what we have here is we have two destructive buttons and two cancel buttons. And as you can see, depending on the button style that you give to the buttons, depending on their role, they look different. So if we just look at our first example here with our button destructive, as you can see here, when we actually use a button style bordered prominent, you'll see that our delete button actually gets the red delete background and our foreground text is white. But alternatively, if we were to change the style to something like bordered, we'd actually get this effect where it actually sets the background to a grayish and the text within it is the red. Similarly, if you look at cancel, we also get a similar thing where it sets the background of it to blue and the text to white. And also as well, when we set the button style to bordered, we also get this effect where we get the gray background and the blue text. So what you want to do, you want to think about this when you're designing your applications, like what style do I need? If you need a delete button to actually stand out and be prominent, then it makes sense for you to use this. But if it's a delete button that isn't, you know, it's just an option that's there, it's not too important, then you can just go with the bordered, you know, style. So starting with iOS 15, we also have new styles that we can actually add to views and these are called materials. Now it's also worth noting that you can apply these materials onto any other visible view. So it's not just limited to buttons, it can be used on any kind of view where you set a background, but we're just gonna use it specifically on buttons for this example. So I'm gonna type them out and then we'll break them down. So as you can see here in our materials examples, you'll see that we actually set a material by just setting the background and using a dot notation to access the material that you specifically want. So in our first example, you can see that we've just got a button and we're just applying a background onto it of a ultra thin material. So you can see the effect that you get with ultra thin. It's almost like it's on the verge of nearly graying out. Now on our second example, you'll see that we have a thin material, but this time, for the background, we're actually specifying that we want to use a shape to mask it. So we're actually using a capsule over our material. 
So you can see here on the next example as well that we're also using a rounded rectangle going forward. So we have regular material, as you can see here in the middle. We also have thick material, which you can see. And then finally, we have ultra thick material. So you can see that depending on the weight of the material that you want, the more you're able to see the view behind it. So if you go to the ultra thin material, you'll see that the gray background is more visible on it. And if you go to the ultra thick material on the you know higher scale, you'll see that you can still kind of see that you get like this effect on the background, but it's not as visible. So material buttons are really nice to use when you have stuff like pictures or you know views behind it and you want the view to almost get that see-through effect. So there is a use case for this in your design and they can actually really make your buttons pop and look a lot nicer. So that's all the new button styles that we've covered in this video. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Also as well, if you haven't already, I really appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as hitting the subscribe button as well as the notification bell to get updates whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you all in a bit. Deuces.